Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season we're talking about the various elements of grace and the saving work of Jesus, and today, salvation. While the word means a large number of things in Catholic tradition, here we're talking about people who have been saved, the salvation of souls. People who have been delivered from distress or oppression by evil to a state of freedom and security. According to this understanding of the term, all of those in both heaven and purgatory are in the state of salvation. Those in heaven are perfectly free of evil and united to God, while those in purgatory are guaranteed to reach heaven, even if they may still need to experience some further suffering and purification first. Neither those in heaven or in purgatory can ever end up in hell, no matter what, and that makes even those in purgatory far better off than we are. Generally, people don't reach this state without dying, though it starts to get a bit murky around certain rare biblical people, like Enoch and Elijah. Our bodies have been contaminated with mortality by original sin, and by dying in a state of justification, God can purify our souls in preparation for the final step, the resurrection of the body. As we've discussed before, there will come a time when the old heavens and the old earth will pass away, Revelation 21.1, and everyone will be bodily resurrected, though not everyone will be happy about it, John 5.28-29. At that point, those who follow Jesus will experience an amazing change in their state of life and will have special qualities similar to those that Jesus demonstrated after he was raised from the dead. In describing this state of being, St. Thomas Aquinas used the words impassibility, subtility, agility, and clarity to describe them, all of which are qualities that Jesus demonstrated in the Gospels after being resurrected, and all of which make the human body less limited and more like our spirits or mental images of ourselves. Impassibility refers to two major qualities, immortality and imperviousness to unwelcome passions. Glorified, resurrected humans would be invulnerable to both death and to the emotional temptations that draw us into evildoing. Subtility refers to a lack of reliance on physical laws, such as the ability of Jesus to pass through closed doors. Agility refers to the ability of the body to move with an ease and speed not bound by the limits of physical distance, just as Jesus was able to move from one city to another in a flash, appearing to hundreds of his followers. In short, teleportation, great speed, and as Jesus demonstrated at the ascension, flight as well. Finally, Clarity refers to a great sort of beauty and radiance, as Matthew 13.43 reveals, Then shall the just shine as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. It's no accident that these are the qualities given to the just, because they're all qualities that increase our freedom to act in the world, and decrease the vast gulf between what we can do and what we can imagine ourselves doing, but without violating the freedom of those around us. They're all abilities that it's moral to have and use, but which we don't at present possess, except in our imaginations. However, all of this isn't even the tip of the iceberg. You see, the main advantage to being saved is being with God, whose very presence makes things perfect. Those humans who are saved, of course, will also be perfected, but won't be perfection itself, only God is that, and everyone and everything in his presence will be made perfect by him, not just people, but animals, plants, mountains, and so on. It will be a truly rewarding and perfect life, if only I should be fortunate enough to experience it. Next time, we'll look at some rare exceptions to the rules we've been discussing. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.